welcome to this episode of One Pan Nan. I'm Nan Kelly, and we're here in one of my favorite places in all of the world, Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I love it over here. The scenery, as you can see, is spectacular, and so are the people. On a recent trip over here, I met artist David Howard. He has a pottery studio called Treasures in Earth and Vessels. And one of his best-selling pieces is the Mountain Manna Chicken Cooker. So we're gonna visit with David in the studio today. I might throw a little pottery, and then we're gonna cook up some orange rosemary chicken from Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Hello. Hi, Nan. Welcome. Oh, hi there. Oh, thank you. Now that is a welcome, David <laughs> Howard. Oh, how sweet. So good to welcome see to, you. Welcome uh, to Gatlinburg. Thank you. Yeah, great store. Thanks. Glad you're here. There are lots of different types of pottery, but yours is specific. Like you said, it's a folk. All of my shapes are based off the shapes that would have been done in the late 1800s. I, gotcha. I just like that very simple kind of. Um, shape that speaks more of function than it does of you know Flash. artistic value or whatever it's it's made to be used yeah i love this not too bad little pr i mean folks <laughs> had an article in southern living a few years ago and your stuff has been in a movie yes it was in the movie tom and huck back in the early 90s as some of the prop pieces what are some of the things like that the, we... the spoon crock was in there some oh. of the serving pieces um, let's go over to the spoon crock <laughs> So this this is a piece that was in the movie. Yes. How long have you been a potter? Almost 20 years. I was in Franklin, Tennessee, south of Nashville for several years, then moved over here almost 18 years ago. You are a minister for a long that time. That was my background. I worked on college campuses in Alabama, and then uh, moved to Nashville, and were in the campus positions available at the time. So I done clay as a hobby, so I started doing it full time. I just felt like it was a thing to do, it was something I enjoyed doing. Yes. Uh, as a friend of mine says, I'll do something that lets your kid lose, you get excited about. Uh, and 20 years later, I'm still excited about it. The most recent thing I've been excited about, the friend is helping me with, called a Clayderondack. I love Clayderondack. It's an Adirondack <laughs> chair with clay slats and back. I've never seen anything. Is there? Is there? There's I've not never seen anybody do it, but it's just, you know, your mind wanders when you're making coffee mugs, and well, I wonder if I could do this. And <laughs> everybody kept saying, "No, you can't do that." And I was like, "Well, I think I can." And here's this is proof it can fancy. be done. The one over here is red oak, Ooh. and the tree was left to decay before it was cut down, and so the worms got in and started the decaying process. You can see some of the holes. In Oh, but I Makes for some like, nice yeah, visual texture in the, in the piece. What kind of clay do you work I with? I use stoneware clay, has uh, manganese specks in it, so you can actually see the, the clay body through the, like that's a pure white glaze, but it has manganese specks in it to give it some visual texture. I love this, you're in the recipe business too. <laughs> my that's kind my of bread fella. baker, it has 24 <laughs> quick bread recipes that come with it. I like doing things that you can, that people can use if you give them an idea behind it. Absolutely. They'll do something with it. The bread baker is one. Uh, the chicken cooker we're going to talk about in a few minutes is we're another one. A pie plate that has a Smoky Mountain mud pie recipe. I, I dang um, it, did I? Did we bring our credit card, Charlie? Because I think we're going to be doing some Christmas shopping while we're here. <laughs> Moved out of the pottery studio. Used to live right down the road, so a friend's let us borrow her kitchen so we can come and make a chicken and show you how it's done. And I'm so glad she did because I'm starving. I'm ready. I'm ready to. Working in your store made me hungry. Okay, so the, the chicken cooker, it's the Mountain Manna chicken right. cooker. Well, how are some of the ways that some of your customers cook it? Any liquid of your choice. Beer, okay. I particularly if I'm gonna choose beer, generally a dark beer, Guinness, you can kill them, something like that. Wine, white wine is particularly good. Okay. Orange juice, like we're going to do. I've had people tell me they use Dr. Pepper, any ah, kind of soft drink. Because it, it steams, so we're going to put the chicken uh, on it and then it, it steams it from the inside, and right? And roast it on the outside. So it's oh. nice and crispy on the outside. Just 
it's literally falls off the bone. Really? All right, so let's let's go for it. And this is the one that we were making in the studio, right? Yes. I mean, not the one, but the same same shape. And you marked mine for me. I have. It's a little wompy. <laughs> I made these like yesterday afternoon. Okay. They'll, I should be able to get them dry enough today to turn them upside down and trim the bottoms of them. Then these are the inserts that will go in the middle of the chicken cooker. Got it. I make mine in two pieces so you can use it for other things. I love that. You can use that as a chip and dip holder. You right. can use this as a casserole. Yep. That's wonderful. Gives you a lot of flexibility. Uh -huh. Then they'll air dry for several days. Then go into the kiln the first time, come out, I'll glaze them, put them back in the kiln. The last time to almost 2300 degrees. So when you do this, you're you're on the wheel. Is that the technical yes. terms? Okay. What, what are you going to make? I'm going to make another chicken cooker base. I've weighed the clay and then prepared it. Sometimes it sticks better than others. <laughs> And you've got you've got your 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 control there on the yep, foot. Yep, that's my speed control. All right. Foot pedal. This is called centering. Centering it. Get the clay all going in one direction, flattening it out. Do a lot of people come in here and just watch and ask you a ton of questions as you're doing that's it? That's why my shop is set up like this, so folks can come in and see me at work. And do you enjoy that process, that aspect of it, telling oh, very people much, how it works? Yes. And you got a sponge there, what's that for? Keeps the clay moist. Okay, gotcha. So your hands don't stick. Those ridges around the pieces are where your fingers That's are right. molding them. And a lot of potters say, oh, I don't like those, they're called throwing lines. Like, to me, that shows it's handmade. Just getting the wall a little bit thinner. I've got a ruler that has a mark on it that tells me the size I want. It shrinks 12 and a half percent, so I know if I make it 10 and a half, it's going to end up being a nine inch piece what, when I'm finished. What's that? Cut off wire, I just put it down, run it underneath the pot so it doesn't stick to this plastic bag. So when I come back later, I can pick it up and it's not stuck. All done. <laughs> In like four minutes or whatever it was. A minute and a half and 20 years worth of practice. <laughs> Put your hands on it. Take your, take your ring off first. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you probably don't worry about manicures in your line of work, no, do you? Not too See, much. That would be the problem with me, okay. Put your hands in the water. All right. Just put them gently on the cup and around. Squeeze it up. Then come back and take your hand over the top like that and press it down. Ooh, ooh, ooh. See? Cleared it up. It's all right. Oh, geez. There's the goes $45 worth of clay. Take your thumb just like that. You have to have pretty strong it. hands, don't you? You get some pretty good handshake going on. Yeah. You feel that? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Gently remove your hands. A little bit more moisture. Okay. Now take it right here. Yeah. One hand on the inside. Oh. One hand on the outside. Okay. Just like that. Very gently start pushing with that inside hand. See? Moving it. Now very slowly oh, I feel that. try to pull it up. Squeeze between. Pull it up to the top. Okay. There you go. It's a little lopsided. That's gonna be real pretty. <laughs> Can you make something out of that? Oh, uh, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> I think we may have to start it. Oh yeah, now wait a minute, you're just making the lip on it. You just gently press down the edge yep, there? I'll take it and just kind of turn it over and okay. it sets down. I'm going to have to make a mark on this one so I know which one it is and send it to you and say, oh, this is the pocket man Oh, made. will you? We can do well, that. I hardly made it, I just kind of put my touch on it a little bit. Oh, thank you. My manicure went to pot. Oh, well, I didn't really have a manicure. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna pour, how, how much? Oh. I would say 18 ounces, two thirds full, something two -thirds, like that. Okay, gotcha. So we're 
So a little orange juice. All right, so we got the chicken and we're just gonna place them on the bean. There we go. I liked your idea about the oranges and the orange juice. And you said people put rosemary with the oranges right. too, some of your customers. Will you hand me, pour in my little hands, please, a bunch of that rosemary, perfect. So we're just gonna take, take it and just kind of pat it. I've washed this chicken really well and patted it a little bit dry. Then we're gonna take the rosemary and just pop it on there. Maybe just a little more for the other side. Perfect. So, I'll do that. Okay, take that chicken seasoning and I just grab some just all all encompassing chicken seasoning. I'm gonna wash my hands while you're doing that. This is a little bit of um, mandarin olive oil. But you could just drizzle. You know what? My grandmother always took the turkey at, at Christmas time and um, smeared butter on the skin mm -hmm. just to kind of crisp it up a little bit. So you could use a little olive oil or, or if you have some rosemary infused olive oil or something mm -hmm. like that, wouldn't that be good? But this is, smell that. Mm -hmm. Isn't that nice? So we're just going to drizzle that. Okay, an important aspect of this too, to keep the chicken nice and moist, yep. is we take a full plug, put it in the top of the neck, that way that keeps all the moisture inside the chicken. Gotcha. It helps to steam it for a while. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, we got that done. And then halfway through, we're gonna put the vegetables. Now you could you could use also use like bell peppers or red peppers, anything, anything you, you want. We have red potatoes and onions and carrots here. So this is gonna go in halfway through the cooking time, as well as a couple of orange slices. Are we ready to get the bird in the oven? Ready to go. All right. There we go. 350 for an hour and a half, you're good to go. I think I could make a couple pieces of pottery in that time. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. <laughs> I stink at it, go on, be honest. <laughs> we have fun. <laughs> Mr. Dave Howard, are you ready? We're ready. Chick I've got my mitts on, going in, going in the oven. I think it's ready. Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. That, I'll let you shut that down if you don't mind. Gosh, that looks great. Take that little part out right there. Ooh, that's hot. David, you did good. It looks wonderful. The Mountain Manna Chicken Cooker. Yeah. Available at dhowardpottery.net or if you're over here in Gatlinburg, which I highly suggest you come to the arts and crafts community, on Glades Road you should look up treasures in earth and vessels because you can have one of these. I love this. Thank you. I just love you to pieces. I love my new one pin man mugs. Oh, those mugs, handmade by him, are available at the website, so check those out too. Thank you so much. Glad to help. Always appreciate, you being here. appreciate seeing you, David. All right, let's eat. Mm -hmm.